so this code is starting to shape up. It has a lot of functionality here. We can store variables, we can add people, but it has a bit of an issue. If we have this contract and we wanna say, oh, what was Kelly's favorite number? Let's say we have four people in the array. Let's have Pat, seven, John, eight, Mariah, 10, and Chelsea, 22, or 232. And we ask the question, ah, what was Chelsea's favorite number? Well, the way we would do it is we'd have to actually loop through this list of people to find Chelsea. So we'd say, okay, what's at zero? Ah, okay, that's Pat. That's not Chelsea. What's at two? Ah, that's John. What's at three? Ah, that's Mariah. Or excuse me, what's at three? Ah, that's Chelsea. Favorite number 232. Okay, perfect. I found Chelsea. But obviously, if we had a thousand people in this array, that would be a very tedious process, and that would take a long time for us to find the person that we wanted. So the question then is, is there a better data structure than a list or an array to use that makes it much easier to access and find the information about the people that we want? And the answer to this is using a mapping. You can think of a mapping as a dictionary. It's a set of keys with each key returning a special set of information about that key. So it's similar to a dictionary. If you look up the word the, the word the will have a whole bunch of text associated only with the word the. So let's create a mapping type and you'll see how it works in practice. So we're gonna create a mapping like this with this mapping keyword. And we'll say the key is going to be a string and it'll point to a uint256. So this is going to be our type. Obviously what comes after the type, our visibility. So let's just go ahead and do public for this as well. And I like to be very explicit with my naming. So I'm gonna say name to number, signifying that this map maps someone's name to their favorite number. And now with this, we have essentially a dictionary where every single name or every single string is gonna map to one number. So for example, if we looked up Chelsea, we'd automatically get returned the 232 that we're looking for instead of having to iterate through this list. So let's add some capabilities to our add person function here so that we can update our mapping. So we have this list of people dot push, which adds someone to the array. Let's also update this so it will also add somebody to our mapping. To do that, we'll say name to favorite number. And we put these little brackets in here to specify what the key is. And we'll say underscore name, and we'll assign that to underscore favorite number. What this line is doing is now it's saying, all right, in our mapping up here, in our name to favorite number mapping, Anytime you look for that person's name, you'll automatically get their favorite number back. And now you have a much quicker way to access people's favorite numbers just by knowing their name. So let's go ahead, let's compile this. Let's deploy this, let's delete our old one. We'll deploy this. Now we have this new name to favorite number blue button. And so let's go through the same problem. So let's say we have Pat, seven, John, 16. Mariah, 32, Chelsea, 232. Now, same thing, list of people zero returns Pat, list of people one, John, so on and so forth. Or we could just go down here and let's say, let's look up Chelsea and we automatically get 232. We get Chelsea's favorite number back automatically. Same thing, if we look up Pat, we get seven. If we look up John, we get Mariah. And if we look up cheesecake, we get nothing back. In a mapping, the default value for all the keys is zero. So if you look up a key or a word that we haven't added in the mapping yet, it defaults to the default value of whatever that type is. Since ours is a string to uint256, uint256 default type is zero. If we look for a key that we haven't added, we get zero back.